Okay, let's look at the technique of source transformation, which as we said before is one of the advanced circuit transformation techniques we're going to learn to use. What is source transformation? Well, it's fundamentally, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to draw two circuits. First is a circuit that's composed of just a voltage source in series with a resistor. Call this VS. I'm going to call that RS. And in this case, I've got my nodes A and B with a load resistor with a voltage and current associated with that. So that's all I've got inside is just this circuit. So inside this box. Is my, is my circuit. Now, I claim the following. I claim there exists a symmetric transformation such that I can do this. I can transform what's in the box to this. I claim I can transform the voltage source in series with the resistor into a current source in parallel with the same resistor. So the R sub S is the same. And in addition, if I put R load between terminals A and B, I'll get the same voltage, the same current. So in this case, I get the same V load and I load given the same R load. So as far as the load resistor is concerned, there's no difference between being connected to that circuit versus that circuit. And I, so I claim I can transform this to that and back and forth. There's a symmetric transformation. Okay. Can I prove this? What is required to make this transformation valid? Well, clearly there must be some relationship between VS and IS. So what, what is required in order to make that symmetric transformation mathematically valid? Well, let's give these uh, numbers here. I'm going to call this circuit 1. I'm going to call this circuit 2. So let's go through for circuit 1. Okay. For circuit 1, I can treat this nodally. I'm going to ground the B node. This becomes Vs. And so in this case, I've got the current flowing through this resistor. And so in this case, I'm just going to go through and say that if I've got V load between the B and the A and I ground the B, then clearly the voltage up here just must be equal to V load, right? That's the node voltage by inspection. It's defined by that voltage drop. And therefore, Vs minus V load over Rs 
must be equal to V load over R load. And if I do a little bit of algebra, what I will get, this will lead to the following equation, that V load is equal to R load over RS plus R load times Vs. And some of you may recognize this is nothing more than the voltage divider equation. So a little bit of algebra gets me from here to here. Okay? Now, let's look at circuit two. For circuit two, in this case, once again, I'm going to ground this. Once again, this becomes a V load. That's the voltage at the top, except in this case, the entire top node is the same node. So once again, I've got a current flowing through this resistor RS that I define. And therefore, IS is equal to V load over RS plus V load over R load. Once again, I can do a little bit of algebra, and what I will get is that V load must be equal to R load over R load plus RS times IS RS. So I claim that V load has to be the same between these two, right? That was, that's the whole point of this transformation. V load must be the same, given R load, which means this is equal to this. And the only way that can happen, since this and this are clearly the same, is if Vs is equal to Is times Rs. or IS is equal to VS over RS. And those are the equations for source transformation, which when you think about them are really just Ohm's law. So the transformation is this must be equal to IS RS. This must be equal to VS over RS. So as long as I apply these calculations to go from this to this or from that to that, then I will have a valid transformation. And in a nutshell, that is source transformation. Let's work an example now and let me, I will show you how source transformation can be useful to us. First, let's do a very simple transformation. Let's do a very simple example, just to see how source transformation works. Okay, here I've got a circuit, and I want to calculate V load. What's V load going to be equal to? Well, you can easily calculate this. Ohm's law, 10 divided by 2 plus 8. Clearly, there must be one amp flowing around that mesh. You can easily prove it to yourself, which means V load must be equal to 8 times 1 is equal to 8 volts. So I have 8 volts across this. Now let me transform it. I'll transform this. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5 amps. And in this case, the 2 amp, the 2 ohm resistor, I'm sorry, the 2 ohm resistor is now in parallel. And now I've got the same 8 ohm resistor between nodes A and B.
And once again, what's V load? Well, I, there are lots of different ways I can calculate this. In this case, I'm just going to take these two resistors and say, hey, these are in parallel. What's the parallel value here? Well, 2 times 8 divided by 2 plus 8 is equal to 1.6 ohms. So in parallel, those resistors are 1.6 ohms. We've got the same V load between nodes A and B. And therefore, by Ohm's law, V load will therefore be equal to 5 times 1.6 will be equal to 8 volts. Not surprisingly, I get the same voltage across the resistors. So as far as the 8 ohm resistor is concerned, it doesn't matter which of these circuits I use. They're equivalent. Source transformation works for either one, and I can go from this circuit to this circuit and back again. So on a simple scale, we can see source transformation works very well. But now let's look at something more interesting we can do with source transformation. Let's look at this. What if you have a circuit like this? I want to simplify this such that I have a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. So I want to transform this circuit with one source and three resistors into a single voltage source in series with a single resistor. How do we do that? Well, it turns out we can do that with source transformation. Let's go ahead and apply that. Let's take this circuit, and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to transform this. I've got a voltage source in series with a resistor. Let's do a transformation with that. And if I do that, what I'm going to wind up with is, in this case, a 5 amp current source in parallel with a 2 ohm resistor. So 5 is equal to 10 divided by 2 and then the rest of the circuit remains the same. So that's the first step. I go from here to here. Now what can I do? Ah, now I've got two resistors in parallel. These are in parallel. Two ohms and two ohms in parallel is equal to one ohm. Two times two divided by two plus two. Which means the next step is I get this. I get a five amp source in parallel with a one ohm resistor. And I've still got the 6 ohm resistor left from the original circuit. Now I do another transformation. Let's transform this and let's go back to a voltage source in series. And if I do that, what I will get is this will be equal to 5 times 1 is equal to 5 volts in series with 1 ohm and in series with 6 ohms. And now these two are in series and therefore I combine those together and here's my answer. A 5 volt source in series with a 7 ohm resistor. And that's what this transforms into here. 
So I can take an arbitrarily complex circuit composed of resistors and independent sources, and I can go through step by step, and I can wind up with a single voltage source in series with a single resistor, or a single current source in parallel with a single resistor. So this is a way of transforming a circuit down to just two elements. Now, the problem here is I can't really do this trick with a dependent source because if I, for example, if I had a dependent source and that dependent source was a function of the voltage across that 2 ohm resistor, at some point if that 2 ohm resistor disappears and gets transformed, I lose the variable. So my dependent source has no meaning. So I can't really do source transformation and simplify a circuit step by step if I have dependent sources in it. But it works very nicely for independent sources. Now, what if you have dependent sources? Can I still do this transformation? Can I still go from here to here with any arbitrary circuit, even with dependent sources? Absolutely. How are we going to do that? By using a more advanced circuit transformation technique called Thevenin's theorem, and we'll see that next time.